Hi right, guys. Well, lucky you if this camera will keep from collapsing. You get a second chronicle of the collapse on this exciting Saturday night and here uh, a few miles from the asteroid strike here in the middle of the collapsed Mayan Empire in Buena Vista, California, where it is an exciting Saturday night, February 25th, 2023. And uh, so, just as kind of I said in, <laughs> in this chronicle of the collapse I just did, uh, uh, you know, my evil twin was walking through the jungle today and uh, thinking about that interview with uh, Elizabeth Colbert on Manga Bay, just talking about how humans just can't stop. We just can't stop eating the planet. We just can't stop. Can't do it. We, we have to build tourist trains through the jungle. Don't, don't, even, don't even get me going. So I was over there contemplating the uh, humans. Contemplating humans. And then I came back and clicked on medium.com and I have mentioned this fellow before uh, this fellow named Michael Campy C-A-M-P-I who is still has not gathered 500 followers uh, I honestly believe Michael Campy is uh, if you're if you're a doomer just going down this rabbit hole Michael Campy at uh, medium.com I don't know why this man isn't a lot more famous. Uh, so anyway, this guy, he is, good Lord, is this man prolific. I'm sorry I didn't meet him when I was out there in L.A. a few weeks ago. But anyway, uh, his rant today, picking up on the theme of, of humans just can't stop, is titled Access Denied. And he starts off with a quote by Edward Abbey, quote, the idea of wilderness needs no defense. It only needs defenders, close quote. Thank you, Edward Abbey, father of five. <clears throat> well, that we know about. Okay, Michael, take it away. In the lobby of the airport in Anchorage, Alaska, there is a large poster with a picture of a beautiful, pristine wilderness. The caption on the poster is, Turn Exclusive into Inclusive. It is an advertisement for a travel company that will take you on a trip to the wilderness. They will give you access to a natural wonder that should be, by all rights, inaccessible. We will, upon arriving at this place, wonder where the bathrooms are, why there is no Wi-Fi, where are we going to sleep, who is going to make dinner for us, and why there are no modern conveniences available. I was camping at a place called Montaña de Oro near Morro Bay, California. I arrived in the late afternoon and there was no one there, but as the day wound down, more and more people showed up. They brought radios and huge RVs and generators, apparently incapable of surviving even one night without TV, music, and radios. The single most damaging thing that can happen to a natural environment is us. We cannot be trusted with beautiful places. I have witnessed the degradation of the California coastline between Monterey and Morro Bay as more and more humans gained access. They took what is arguably one of 
the most gorgeous places in the country and turned it into an overcrowded theme park somewhat reminiscent of Disneyland on a warm summer day. The two-lane highway is choked with traffic and the small town of Cambria is so overwhelmed that it is nearly impossible to even walk through. There is new housing everywhere and roadside business sprouting like weeds around every corner. But unlike weeds, these businesses seem alien and out of place. Imagine how different the world would be if in order to get to a particular location you would have to walk. Instead of an easy four to five hour drive up the coast, you would have to walk hundreds of miles to arrive at your destination. To see the places that were worth seeing would require a considerable effort on your part and you would not take this journey lightly. There would be months of preparation and then weeks of walking and, um, and upon arrival you would be greeted with the most fantastic sights and then you would have to walk back. That would turn your leisurely four to five hour drive into a trip that would require all told the better part of six months that barrier alone would save a lot of natural places from our destructive behavior. We ruin everything that has the misfortune of standing in our path. We leave no stone unturned in our relentless quest to go places and see things we seem to have an insatiable appetite for destruction. This is the end result of our complete and total separation from the natural world. We no longer see ourselves reflected in our environment and so can destroy it with impunity. There are studies showing that the further we detach ourselves from the world that supports us, the sicker we get. Frank Forensich, author, writer, and activist at Exuberant Animal, said in his article titled, A Body as Big as the Earth, quote, When we get serious about identification with habitat, the implications are unavoidable. What we do to the earth, we do to ourselves, our bodies, minds, and spirits. We begin to see that habitat abuse is really self-abuse, and even more to the point, it is a form of violence against our descendants. Ecocide is not too strong a word for this kind of behavior, close quote, we can put habitat abuse in the glossary of the collapse, habitat abuse. Being unable, this is back to Michael now, being unable to see ourselves as part of the greater whole is a sad and tragic loss. So separate have we become that we would quite literally kill ourselves rather than re-embrace the natural world. We continue like a viral horde in service to the single-minded goal of continuous consumption. There are commercials on TV that show a happy father and his son safely cocooned in a tent, looking at the stars on a computer. Car advertisements offer freedom and always show the car driving through beautiful countryside unencumbered by traffic. What they do not show is the extent 
of the damage done to the environment by the production of those cars and computers or the nearly limitless expanse of land devoted to the automobile. They don't show the parking lots, the highways and byways, the factories billowing noxious clouds of the refineries that produce the fuel, or the mines that steal the raw materials for the batteries that keep the cars and computers running. We have had the wildness beaten out of us and our desire for the trinkets of the modern age has brought us to the edge of extinction. Anything that requires physical effort on our part is discarded or farmed out as we have lost the resilience and capacity for existing as wild beings. Wildness is self-limiting and does not allow for unconscious behavior. You have to understand your environment in order to live within its confines and any deviation from that will result in serious injury or death. Amen. Brother Michael Campy. And with that, I need to go uh, physically exert myself and make my own margarita since I don't want to go walk I don't want to go walk uh, two blocks and pay eight dollars to farm out the margarita making job at the at the high-end tourist hotel next door so I'm gonna make my own margarita and go swat mosquitoes here in the collapse while I still can, but at least the stars I'm going to be looking at uh, are not going to be on a computer. Bye, guys. Can I hear you, bottle? Oh, yes, I love that sound of clinking tequila bottles on a Saturday night. Bye, guys. Turn this thing off. Is it still on?